if humanity's greatest trait can be found within our artists and children. Exists Charles Bukowski, Kaspar David Friedrich, Sylvia Plath, and Antoinette Dvorak, a drunk, a romantic, a suicidal, and a recluse, all of whom at one point were wildly depressed, but even worse still, artists. What have they in common with the wholesome minds of children? To quote Picasso, all children are artists. The problem is how to remain an artist once he grows up. Therefore, the opposite also applies. Not all artists are children in the same manner that not all artists are true and honest. How would you judge the validity of another's art? It is perhaps as slanderous to do as the discarding of your childish skin for an adult one of perceived freedom. For in doing so, you may earn a physical freedom but lose a mental one. You even perhaps lose humanity's greatest freedom, to create with abandon. And yet this idea of one being able to create with abandon suggests you'd need a predisposed, predestined strain of subtle heroism running throughout your genetic lines to even begin creation. But this is not so, as we quite regularly hear of ordinary acts of ingenuity, of of ingenu um, of, we quite regularly hear of ordinary people performing marvelous acts of ingenuity within our local headlines. Every brave act of heroism that runs throughout the news is such an act of adrenaline-fueled innovation occurring in the spark of a moment, a flash reminder of creativity that occurred in our youth with regularity. This is what is, this is, what is lost, more often than not, within the confines of adulthood. As a child, you created even without intention, without thought of if you may fail or maybe the behavior was not in the least bit acceptable, but you did so anyway because by God you were going to create, if nothing else, a moment in which you would absolutely command attention. It is this inherent audacious nature that presents itself before we are deceptively indoctrinated by rigid schooling systems. This nature manifests itself through the wax that manages its way outside of coloring book lines. Even at this age, however, are some of us impregnated with the yearning to contain ourselves within those frames of neatness. However, non-existent boundaries are displayed within the majority of us who did not care whether the colors spilled over the edges. But then we age, and the manner in which we have been taught within a society that generally promotes creative conformism, and as we do so, we command le less. And as we do so, we command less of our lives. Oh, sorry, less attention, and consequently less of our lives, and become, lo and behold, adults, mentally crippled and deprived of the creative oxygen that enriched our prior lives. When we accept the monotony of being creative, so long as that creativeness may be hoarded within the confines of standardized testing, we pose great risk of losing our inherent innovation and becoming internal value systems for which the solution is either A, B, or C. But no, the artist you know you are rejects this and counters with Dylan Thomas. You know how to rage against the dying of the light for you did once. Really, not what if humanity's greatest trait can be found within our artists and children, but rather, what if we exhume the reckless abandon of the younger self? What if we did not bury such a vital soul? The traits that accompany the ability to create with abandon, such as curiosity, imagination, these are traits that have prevailed within the history of humanity and shall continue to do so, from our primate ancestors to us modern homo sapiens. And these traits spoken of in all generality, what ground do they hold with the cold logic of algorithms and mental processes of solid calculation? Um, to quote Dead Poet Society John Keating, medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. The idea is to combine the passion of childhood and artistry, the genuine want of knowledge for its taste and want of honesty for its own properties of metamorphosis. What if every doctor, lawyer, CEO, and architect were also an artist? Would it spark the creation of new inventions in their respective fields? To combine characteristics of both may serve such an ideal. But to further uncover the flesh of the matter, it only makes sense to ask, why? Why might it be necessary or more than beneficial to preserve the ability to create with ab abandon found most naturally within the artists and children of our species? After all, didn't we just create Flappy Bird? Really, what more of our race could we possibly ask to distract us with? However, honestly, despite the marvelous inventions being created daily that progress humanity forward, could not we go further? Ask what more could be accomplished if the synaptic transmission biochemist were also a closet poet, or in the Nobel Prize winning case of Thomas Sudhoff, a bassoonist. Having won in 2010 for the advancement of physiology and medicine, Sudhoff was quoted as stating his most influential teacher to be the man who taught him music, his bassoon teacher. And from him he gathered that the only way to do something was to practice and listen, practice and listen for hours and hours and hours. 
and of those hours spent listening and concentrating, traits which often accompany but are seldom referenced as side effects of musicianship, was born an understanding of possible molecular mechanisms that contribute to disorders such as Alzheimer's and autism, with the potential to understand their future eradication. This is what is lost, and for what must be fought, in the endeavor of living and not merely existing, to channel wild, and in being our greatest human selves. And yet the fundamental question remains, how? How do we exhume the reckless abandon of the younger self or prevent the need to do so from ever occurring? Somewhere between putting away childish things and declaring a newly awkward adulthood lays a plane, a vastly reaching timeline with no definitive beginning or end. And in this endless multiverse with which we do not have two feet in different places, but rather every limb at opposing odds, do we tend to fall in line with the great creative conformism itself. Although this diverging from our imaginative independence may happen in ways mostly imperceptible, we can still challenge ourselves constantly, not to prove an intelligence, but a mind. It is as simple as going to your favorite source of news, finding the most convoluted issue of the day, and asking yourself, what is the solution? And yet it goes beyond only posing questions. For the key to creating with abandon is to just create every ridiculous idea along the way until you find yourself with one that is the least bit feasible and throwing yourself at it with veracity. Exists a drunk, a romantic, a suicidal, and a recluse, all of whom at one point created with reckless, childlike abandon and who were, better yet, artists. <laughs>